manners don't cost anything but manners are extremely powerful <laughs> I hope you're all doing well and that you had a great week. Yes, I'm in my usual place now, it seems, the car. So to all of my house guests, grab yourselves a drink and make yourselves comfortable. If you're passing by and you'd like to become a house guest, don't forget to hit subscribe and activate all of your notifications. I'm Chez, this is Chemois, welcome to my place. Latinoamérica, soy Megan Marco Rachel Zane de Suits y les invito a que vean la serie desde el 4 de julio por Space. During a week where it was reported that William secretly earns £800,000 a year from a car showroom complex in the West Midlands, whose vehicles are predominantly petrol and diesel, which appears to contradict William's environmentally green position in public. Thursday saw the arrival of Harry and Meghan in Colombia. La realeza llegó a Colombia. Por primera vez el duque y la duquesa de Sussex, el príncipe Harry y Meghan Markle, pisan tierra latinoamericana. Todo por invitación del gobierno colombiano, especialmente de la vicepresidenta Francia Márquez, quien los invitó personalmente y con la cual hablarán de temas como la preocupación por la niñez, el ciberacoso y la violencia digital contra la mujer. Esto fue lo que dijo la vicepresidenta. Vi la serie de Netflix sobre su vida, sobre su historia y eso pues... Me conmovió y me motivó a decir, esta es una mujer que merece venir a nuestro país y contar su historia y su intercambio, sin dudas, será un fortalecimiento a tantas mujeres en el mundo. El príncipe Harry y Meghan Markle tienen una agenda apretada de cuatro días en el país, donde además de visitar Bogotá, estarán en Cali y se espera que allí asistan al Festival Petronio y también en Cartagena, donde se espera que conozcan el municipio de San Basilio de Palenque y en todo su recorrido que hablen con fundaciones, organizaciones y líderes sociales y campesinos del país. While TV media in the UK have barely mentioned this event on their live news programs, they have provided articles on their websites, and here's one example. This article is taken from news.sky.com, published on the 15th of August 2024, and the headline reads, Prince Harry and Meghan arrive in Colombia after Vice President moved by Netflix documentary. Prince Harry and Meghan have landed in Colombia for their second major overseas tour outside of the royal family. 
the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were welcomed by Vice President Francia Marquez to her private residence after she invited them for the four-day visit. It's hoped the visit will help showcase the cultural heritage of the country, but also draw a focus onto the couple's personal priorities, such as the impact of the digital world on young people, celebrating the military community and female empowerment. Ahead of the visit, the Vice President described how watching their Netflix documentary about leaving the royal family had inspired her to send the invitation. She said, The documentary moved me and made me say that this is a woman who deserves to come to our country to tell her story. This exchange will undoubtedly empower so many women in the world. Their first day is due to be spent in the capital, Bogota, and we'll see them visit a school to meet teenagers at a session on online safety, watch a cultural showcase and attend a summit hosted by Ms Marquez, looking at the urgent need to tackle the harmful aspects of technology and digital platforms. Their decision to travel there has particularly drawn attention because of the issues of security. Let me just um, interject here. In 2014, Charles and his second wife went to Colombia. There was no talk of their security. It was very fluffy and light. None of this major concern that we see going on here. And it's very, very telling. Let me continue. The US travel advice for Colombia is at level three, urging people to reconsider travel, but in contrast, the couple currently say they don't believe it is safe for them to visit the UK after their police protection was removed. Simon Morgan, a former Royal Protection Officer and now a private security consultant, told Sky News they will get local security in Colombia alongside their private team, but only because they were invited, which is what makes it different from Harry's personal trips to the UK, where he isn't given security. He said, whilst it's not a place that you would go, yes, it's ideal to go, you can still go there, but you've got to put a lot more in place because of the nature of environment and the current threat and risk in relation to Colombia, not just with the drug cartels, but also with the far left terrorists that are there as well. Because those groups ultimately will look at this occasion to add embarrassment to the government, cause destabilisation, and it's an ideal opportunity because the Sussexes going to Colombia is going to be a world event it's going to be focused on and therefore that sheds light onto the cartels and the far left terrorist cause. In February, Prince Harry lost a high court challenge over the decision to downgrade his security protection since leaving the royal family and moving abroad, but he was later given the right to appeal. In May, he travelled to London without Meghan and it is understood he won't be coming back to the UK for the funeral of his uncle Sir Robert Fellows this summer. Mr Morgan says it's an incredibly complex matter, emotionally and financially. He said, It's always going to be a sticking point because the Duke himself is very much used to 24-hour protection. He grew up with that. We always say the royal family have cradle-to-grave protection. He values the continuity of that team with him and therefore getting access to all the other resources around the world that you would get by being a protected principal here in the UK. It's a very emotive issue, and it's an emotive issue on both sides, not just the Sussexes themselves, but those police officers that would ultimately have to travel with them. It also becomes a logistics issue for the Met Police around officers being outside of the UK. Let me pause again here. When was it ever um, requested that Met Police should travel with Harry and Meghan outside of the UK. I don't remember that conversation taking place. But as always, I defer to your greater knowledge, house guests. When was this ever discussed? They don't even have enough police in London to attend burglaries. All they do is give you a crime reference number and you're told to get on with it. So all of this talk of, you know, Met Police having to accompany Harry and Meghan outside of the UK is utter rubbish. As I say, I could be mistaken, but I've never heard that conversation taking place. 
And it then becomes a legal issue as well around do they have the legal right to carry arms, the use of force. So a very complex issue. During the recent ITV documentary, Tabloids on Trial, Prince Harry said it's still dangerous for Meghan to return to the UK. He added, all it takes is one lone actor, one person who reads this stuff to act on what they have read and whether it's a knife or acid, whatever it is. And these are things that are of genuine concern to me. It's one of the reasons why I won't bring my wife back to this country. This is what the UK press love to do. Hang on to one thing that Harry or Meghan have said and use it as a resounding tag or a soundbite. I played some of that documentary to you guys a few weeks ago and it wasn't just about Harry but this is what they will hang on to because that it gives them justification it gives the UK justification to continue to vilify this couple because as far as they're concerned even with all the things that have happened in recent weeks with regard to these UK wide riots they still don't think Harry is justified in saying what he said utter madness as I suspected it wouldn't be long before the Daily Fail delved into the vice president's background and report with their typically shady undertones this article is from the dailymail.co.uk published on the 16th of August 2024 and let me preface this by saying this is an extremely long article so I am not going to read all of it um, I will just summarize sections which it, it goes it goes into quite a lot of detail the Daily Mail for some reason have made it their job to go right into Vice President Marquez's past and her life um, which is interesting but again, shady undertones. The headline reads, Vice President who invited Harry and Meghan to Colombia is ex-cleaner who is demanding billions from the West to make up for slavery and was targeted by assassins. Harry and Meghan's host in Colombia, Vice President Francia Marquez, is a politician unlike most in the Latin American country and is demanding the West pay for what it did to her ancestors. Ms Marquez, 42, is the country's first black vice president and its first minister for equality, who took office in August 2022, more than 160 years after its first black president, Juan José Nieto Gil. She has said she is among those descended from the legions of Africans who were brought to Colombia as slaves in the 17th century to work the country's gold mines and sugarcane fields, many of whom still face racist abuse and as she invites the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to Colombia in what some have seen as a diversion from her government's domestic problems, she has called for Meghan's home country of the US to lead on forgiving its billions in foreign debt. Her journey from housekeeper to right-hand woman of the heavily left-leaning former armed revolutionary Gustavo Petro is an extraordinary one, punctuated with as much community campaigning as there is controversy. Marquez, who regularly wears clothes celebrating her African heritage, sees herself as sharing an affinity with the Duchess of Sussex, whom she invited to the country after watching the Harry and Meghan documentary on Netflix. She has used her platform to advocate for Afro-descendant people for decades, for which she has been targeted with racist abuse, but has been criticised for using state helicopters as private taxis to travel to work from her private residence. Meghan too has celebrated her own African heritage, telling an audience during her first quasi royal tour in Nigeria earlier this year that she had genealogical roots in the country, with tests showing she was 43% Nigerian. In just these three paragraphs, so much to say. First of all, if the vice president wants to wear clothes celebrating her African heritage, what is the problem? Why does the Daily Mail have an issue with this? And this is why I say shady undertones, okay? 
It's an affront to the Daily Mail. How dare this woman wear African clothes? Second paragraph in this section. She's used her platform to advocate for Afro-descendant people for decades. Yes, and she knows the price that comes with that. Again, if she wants to advocate for Afro-descendant people, what is the problem? And then they talk about her use of state helicopters as private taxis to travel to work for, for from her private residence. Hello, did we not just find out the other day that the royal family in the UK has ordered two brand new helicopters, albeit they're um, using biofuel, but the point is, why can't they take normal transport like trains and um, other modes of transport to, to go about their business? I just find this so hypocritical. And then uh, this last paragraph going on and on because they're so affronted by the fact that Megan has African heritage. I mean, even without us knowing that she's 43% Nigerian, by virtue of the fact that her mum is African American, three blind mice could see that she has African heritage. So all of this, I don't understand what the point of stating these things are. The Daily Mail is affronted by the fact, the very idea that African people exist. <laughs> Shortly before the Sussexes touched down in Bogota yesterday, Ms Marquez told a press conference the visit had been on the cards for a year after she invited Meghan to the country a year ago on July 25th, International Afro-Descendant Women's Day. Ms Marquez said today, we wanted to invite Meghan, an Afro-descendant woman, to participate in that meeting and share her experiences. At that time, we sent her a letter inviting her and she responded to us. The letter said that she couldn't come, but she was eager to visit and get to know our country. Since then, we have been working for a year to achieve this visit, which is so important and good. The four day tour will see the Sussexes visit Colombia's first free town for former slaves that has since been declared intangible cultural heritage of humanity by UN culture body, UNESCO. It's an unsurprising stop on the tour for Ms Marquez, who has had a hand in designing the visit and has called for countries in the Caribbean and the Southern Hemisphere to have their foreign debts forgiven since taking office. She told Politico last year, this would serve as an acknowledgement of the state of subjugation that black people around the world live in as a result of historical slavery and the climate challenges that Southern Hemisphere countries face. The United States should be at the forefront of that policy. I know there's been some reckoning, some conversations about acknowledging that this country is responsible for slavery and racism, and now also climate change. Ms Marquez found her voice at the age of 13, joining an environmental campaign against the exploitation of local gold deposits and diverting the Ovejas River, a lifeline for her local community for the sake of a dam project. And it continues to talk about her activism since then in a lot of detail. Her adult life starting as a cleaner and a housekeeper and then becoming a politician. And in all of that, receiving death threats about a bomb attack, um, bomb planted near where she lives. Um, and I found this interesting. Prior to her election, she wrote to US Vice President, now Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris in 2021 following the murder of George Floyd. I am sure that the majority of the people who voted for you and for President Biden did so in hope of taking the knee off the necks of African Americans in your country, she wrote. As Afro-Colombians and Indigenous peoples, we suffer the same situation. Those who have imposed armed conflict, lethal politics, gender-based violence, structural racism, 
they keep their knees on our necks. Unfortunately, Miss Harris did not write back. Why am I not surprised? Let me keep my views about Kamala Harris to myself because she is not part of the conversation today. And it continues to talk about um, her activism and the obstacles she's faced. Here it says she has welcomed British dignitaries to the country before meeting Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, in November 2023 after she visited the country for four days to shine a light on women impacted by war. I had no idea about this visit until recently. No big fanfare, no um, talk in the press about how dangerous Columbia is and Sophie shouldn't go there. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, one, two, three. Nothing. <laughs> but it's like, I find this so interesting. And then it talks about the uh, political um, states of the country. Um, and then, as usual, the Daily Mail wants to know who's paying for this trip. The Sussex's team has not confirmed how the trip is being funded, whether privately through Harry and Meghan's Archwell Foundation, by the Colombian government or other means. Why is it your business, Daily Mail? UK taxpayers are not paying for this, so why is it your business? It has nothing to do with you. We had to pay for Sophie's trip. We had to pay for Charles and, and uh, Camilla's trip to Colombia back in 2014. Why are these questions never asked? Why is it okay for us to fund them? But when we're not funding the Sussexes, we haven't been for coming up to nearly five years now. Why is it an issue? <sighs> I mean... And then, in conclusion, Ms Marquez summarised of the visit, I also want to take advantage of the media of national and international communication to invite the world to visit our country. Colombia is a country with enormous cultural wealth, with unique biodiversity and strong people who want to get ahead. Colombia, the country of beauty, wants to be the best host, and so it will be. Um, yeah, I found this quite an interesting article, uh, although negatively biased, as, you know, what else would you expect from the Daily Mail? Um, you know, they want to highlight all the negative things about Colombia that's fine don't forget UK you're not being you haven't been seen in the best light recently and when you talk about the country you know Colombia's policy uh, poverty what about the poverty in the UK children going hungry in uh, the fifth or whatever richest economy one of the top 10 richest economies on the planet and you can't even feed your kids homeless people all over the UK. Senior citizens that can't afford to heat their homes, they have to choose between heating and eating. And with that, the winter fuel allowance for senior citizens is gonna be cut. So all of this hypocrisy gets on my nerves. And um, you know what I took from this article is that Vice President Marquez is a formidable woman. She and Meghan are the same age they have quite a lot in common their activism their um african roots and i can see why she felt or she feels an affinity to megan i ha hold my hands up i was ignorant about colombia but the fact that um megan have these megan and harry have these projects in the country including invictus they have these interests Colombia is a country I wouldn't mind visiting. I said that in a previous video. Um, I mean, <laughs> I've been to Jamaica three times. That's supposed to be mega dangerous. I've never experienced anything like that, thank God. Um, I know where to go and where not to go when I go to Jamaica. Um, and all I, when I come back, it's like, I don't want to leave to come back to the UK. It's like, this is amazing. You know, I love Jamaica. Every single country has its problems. So for the UK 
or for the Daily Mail in particular to behave as though, you know, Colombia is the cesspit of the planet. You know, look at yourself, UK. Look at yourself. So, yeah, an interesting but very long, very, very long article. Um, so I've tried to summarise as much as I can and just read out what I consider salient points. So take from that what you want, guys. Here's one observation I found particularly interesting. I just thought before going to bed it's uh, worth pointing out how impressive is Francia Marquez, who used to work as a cleaner. She's moved up from serious poverty to being the vice president of Colombia and meeting uh, Prince Harry and Meghan today in the first day of a four-day tour. I, 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 th I think this is such a, such a positive story and I wish all, all the people involved so much, um, so, 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 so much sort of positivity and enthusiasm in what they are trying to do, trying to put forward a, um, a, a, a very special visit, says uh, Ms. Marquez, um, who invited the Sussexes to Colombia, to, 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 to the country and uh, she hosted them at her official residence um, and you know that there will be problems with security no doubt and there, there, there will be issues in there, and there will be the naysayers standing up to say that um, you know uh, th th this is sort of team B of the royal household but to be, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're specifically focusing on cyberbullying, online digital violence, uh, discrimination, promoting women's leadership. These are such significant topics which are relevant, which are in the news today in the UK as well as across the world. And every time I think, oh, there's an issue going on in the Sussex household um, and the Sussexes turn it round and Harry always seems to me to to emerge as a force of positivity and I think it's a great it's a great shame it's a great shame that um, these two are exiled in California and that they're not here um, and we, we are we are badly in need of their inspiration I think and their, their, their three-day visit to Nigeria in May tremendous tremendous and a a, a, a textbook a, a, um, a land map of what a modern royal visit should should look like and i have to concur with the points well made because they come from an objective and common sense perspective in my humble opinion on the day this video uploads it will be harry and meghan's final day in columbia and i'm reminded of two quotes the first by winston churchill who i am not a fan of because of his well documented discriminatory views but i do love this quote You'll never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. The other quote that often resonates with me is believed to have been attributed to Denzel Washington. You will never be criticised by someone who is doing more than you. You will only be criticised by someone who is doing less. Con la niñez, la juventud y sus padres de familia. Thank you for the question and thank you all so much for being here tonight and taking so much of your time to listen to these panels. I hope you feel as inspired as I do and I think that leads right into your question which is 
part of our goal when my husband and I founded the Arts Health Foundation and had our own lived experience, which a lot of you may have witnessed in terms of what online harms can look like. We knew that in finding a solution, and as my husband often refers to the root cause, that has to start with people that have a level of digital literacy that they are living in and out every day. Now, whether that's by choice or because it's being pushed to them so constantly, they become experts in this field. The most important place that I sit in the world right now is as a mother. So I look at it through the lens of what my children, our children are going to adopt as they get older and how we can keep them safe because I do believe all of us agree, despite whatever disparities there are throughout the world, no one contests the fact that we want to keep our children safe. So that has been a fundamental and incredibly important aspect of how I've approached our philanthropic work. If Harry and Meghan's sole objective was to gain popularity in the minds of wider society, they would never have done the Oprah interview, they would never have done their Netflix documentary, and Harry would never have written Spare, projects that I personally believe they will never regret undertaking. It doesn't matter if you're hated for speaking the truth, because inevitably, as we've seen recently, you will be vindicated no matter how long it takes. One thing that always strikes me with the Sussexes is that they don't hide how they fully support one another, which gives a tiny insight into how robust their relationship is and how their relationship provides a solid foundation for their children who are thriving in a conflict-free environment which will later result in well-adjusted adults. The reason why in the UK there is an underlying feeling of instability since Queen Elizabeth passed is because certain members of the royal family will always put their personal needs and desires before the welfare of their subjects. And by their behaviour, they consistently erode the public's confidence in them, while inadvertently showing that Harry and Meghan operate on a completely different level, which is truly becoming a royalty. Okay, guys, so before I, before I wrap up this video, um, I just wanted to make one or two observations. And this kind of hit me as I was editing. I don't want to talk about Kamala Harris. She's not, you know, she's never been part of my conversation. But I only bring her name up because of that Daily Mail article. Um, and it just struck me how powerful manners are. And I'll break this down for you. According to that article, Francia Marquez had uh, reached out to Kamala Harris uh, following the George Floyd incident and no response. And that speaks volumes. That speaks absolute volumes because it's almost as if Kamala Harris kind of dismissed Colombia as a country. Um, I don't know, that's the vibe that I get. It's like, you're beneath me vibes. And it's very, very interesting how Megan, although she couldn't make it when the invitation was first given a year prior, she responded. She still responded. And that's the impression that I always have of Megan. She always, she's always polite, she always responds because she doesn't want to make that person feel rejected. Um, we're talking in the context of, of this video and what's transpired. I'm not talking about anything else with regard to family members because that's a separate issue. And I already have my views about that. We're not talking about that. The fact that Meghan has been invited, you know, she, she's now in the country with Harry and it's become so publicized and it kind of have you know without causing offense it's kind of put Colombia on the map if that makes sense not that Colombia is not important but you guys get what I mean with regard to the West and its perception I mean some perceptions I guess are still going to be held about Colombia but the fact that 
we've now got an insight into this country and into the vice president. I just found it really, really fascinating. So my point with regard to that is that manners don't cost anything, but manners are extremely powerful. The other observation that I made is nine months ago, uh, Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, was in the country. Like I said, I had no clue about that until very recently. And it's amazing how, you know, I'm sure Duchess of Edinburgh is a nice woman. But do you see the the um, influence that Meghan holds? The, the level of influence because as a as a working member of the royal family Sophie uh, I'm gonna call her Sophie Wessex because that's what I've kind of I had kind of known her, known her as where's the influence there she was supposed to be bringing attention to the impact of war on women from what I recall from that article not a not a peep not a nothing Nothing came of that, as far as I know, not in the public um, consciousness anyway. But as soon as Meghan and Harry arrive, it's like all eyes are on them. And you, you know, you get to find out what projects they're working on. You know, it truly is a global impact. And this is why I always smile and shake my head when the detractors and the derangers and the naysayers come out and it's like, oh, the, you know, then they're useless. They're not doing anything, blah, blah, blah. You know, why is security an issue? Like I said, why is security an issue when it comes to Harry and Meghan and wherever they go? But whenever any other members of the royal family go to these same countries, they've been there before, Harry and Meghan, never an issue. Never an issue. You know, if it's such an issue for the UK and the UK establishment, all you've got to do is reinstate Harry's security. That's all you have to do. But you don't want to do that and by the same token you want to moan and complain that they're going to these countries what do you care if anything happens to them you don't like them to be quite frank and this is where the schizophrenia comes in for me sorry to use that word i don't like using that word but that's the only suitable word i can use you cannot stand the sussexes but you are you know you have expressed this disdain for them when they travel anywhere because of the security the fact is, like Professor Tim Wilson said, and I loved his video, it's such a shame. It's such a shame. The way that Harry and Meghan have been treated by the establishment is absolutely diabolical. And this is why they will always succeed in what they do, because they just keep their heads down, focus on the projects they need to focus on. And they're not doing any underhanded stuff like William. Okay guys, so before my camera finally dies in this heat, I'm going to end the video here. So if your thoughts were provoked in any way, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet become a house guest, don't forget to hit subscribe and activate all of your notifications. I want to take this opportunity to thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and you shall catch me in the next video.